Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu What happens to the soul once a person dies and if someone is destined to suffer the pains in the grave, does his body suffer or does his soul suffer? Jazakumullah khair. That's another very important question. Also, the same introduction that I, I, I would like to say is that the answers for these questions have to be from revelation because we don't know. So it has to be from revelation. If someone has given you an answer and it's not from revelation, it's a problem. So getting back to what happens to the soul, the soul leaves the body. The hadith speaks of it getting to a place known as barzakh. Barzakh is a, is a place where the, these, these arwah are kept, these ruhs or these souls are kept. Uh, waiting for the last day a person who's had goodness and so on the days pass and like a flash a person who's perhaps been a bad person it may pass a little bit slower but getting to the second part of the question the first part was where do the souls go they go into barzakh what exactly is the whole description of barzakh I have to stop where the Quran and the Sunnah have stopped we cannot describe beyond a certain point I will tell you look it's a waiting place it's the souls do not come back to greet the family members every year you need to know that some people say okay every year the soul comes back salam alaikum how are you some people say the soul comes back to us and cleans the home and some people say the soul comes back and does this and does that and I feel it those are you know, jinn sometimes. Those are the devil sometimes. Those are the Qareen sometimes. That's something else. Those are spirits known as spirits in some traditions. But it's not the soul we're talking about. It's not the individual. They don't come back to you and say, hey, how's it guys? Salam alaikum. I remember one person says, I can make your grandfather talk to you. And then uh, the, the, the brother says, I, I went to the man and I said, okay, let me talk to him. And he says, I heard my grandfather's voice. I promise you it was my grandfather. Brother, they are fooling you with the jinn. They are fooling you with, the, with all these Qareens. Don't be fooled. The, the, the souls are gone to a place known as Barzakh. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. When it comes to the connection of the soul and the body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets the body feel the punishment together with the soul in a way that he knows fit that we don't know the explanation of. That's what it is. So when we say adabul qabr and the punishment of the qabr, it is a reality and it is felt body and soul. How? I don't know. Allah knows I stop at that and I believe it because I cannot add or subtract. I have to say, Ya Allah, one day, well, I don't even want to be, be shown it because I don't want to be a part of it. But one day, if you want, if you are curious, perhaps if you get to the other side, you can ask, say, Ya Allah, how did you do that? How was it? For now, it's called belief. We believe in the unseen. Someone might say, well, these people, their bodies were, you know, lost or their bodies were perhaps disintegrated because of something. And how would they be punished? Well, I still believe if Allah wants, he will do it and he will do it exactly that way. How he does it, he knows best. That's how we stop. In this way, you protect yourself you protect your iman when we want to go into deep details that are not in the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah regarding imaniyat and matters of belief we tend to burn our fingers when we burn our fingers by starting to add extra uh, you know cream on the on, on the cake and something which is not supposed to be that's when we falter may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and may he make us from amongst those who do not become so inquisitive that we start asking you know questions that are part and parcel of where we're supposed to have stopped in terms of belief. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. I just want to clarify that last point. What this means is, yes, you are allowed to ask questions and you're allowed to ask any question you want under the sun. But if the answer of the, of the question is not found in revelation and that question is connected to belief, then just stop there and say, look, Allah knows best. That's it. And you will save yourself. Thank you so much, sister. I'm working as a marketing manager in Dubai. I want to know when the soul of the righteous person is taken out. It is mentioned in the hadith that it goes up through all the heavens, seven, six, five, till, till the top. And all the people welcome them. Who is he? Then the angel says, son of so and so. Correct. So when does this happen? Is it after the questioner in the graveyard or I mean the sequence of events? The soul is taken out, then it, is there some waiting time? And then the body goes to the grave. After that, does it start? Is it before the questions or after the questions? According to, according to Jazakallah Khair, I've understood your question. The, according to the hadith, which is muttafaq alayhi in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, this happens immediately. As a person dies, the soul shoots up, shoots straight up. One, two, three, it's greeted by name. So the angels ask, who is this good person? And, and, and uh, immediately the response comes, Fulan ibn Fulan, such and such a person, son of such and such a person. And this is why we say you are going to be known by the name of your father. So even if someone's, you know, identity is hidden, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us, you taught, you, you use the name of your dad. So what happens is they will be told so and so, so and so, and they will know who the person is because the angels right now would know that they've taken the deeds of this person and that person and whatever else it is. And so that hadith in, in which is muttafaq alayhi makes mention of it before the questioning. And then it states that the soul immediately returns. I don't know the time frame of it. And it immediately returns for the questioning in the grave. Wallahu alam. And like I said yesterday, we have to stop where the hadith stops, where it starts, we start. And these uh, uh, matters of the unseen, we have no capacity to respond further than revelation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. And may I end with the dua. May Allah make us from amongst those whose souls go up as good souls. Amin. Bismillah. Uh, are we taking it from the, the sisters? Yes, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My husband's grandmother passed away yesterday and he left for India for the purpose. For at least some months, the emotions within the family will run very high and the relatives will advise about acts of worship that will benefit the departed soul. So I just want to ask you that what are the deeds that the immediate family and the extended family should be doing that will be accepted by Allah during this emotional time? MashaAllah, beautiful question, very important and pertinent. We need to go back to the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, regarding ibn Adam an qata anhu amaluhu illa min thalath. When a person, when a human being passes away, his deeds are actually cut off except from three. Uh, one of them is uh, knowledge that the person has disseminated. It will continue, inshallah, as much as the people continue learning uh, and the fruits continue being reaped. At the same time, uh, also the, the hadith makes mention of a sadaqatun jariya, which means an act of worship, uh, an act of charity that the person engaged in, which would be uh, continuous. So something that the benefit of it continues after the person's life, they would continue getting the reward for it. And at the same time, waladun salihun yad'u which means uh, a pious child making dua for uh, that deceased person. From the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu we've heard him making dua li jami'i mawt al-muslimin for all all the, the, those who've passed away from the ummah. So to make dua is perhaps the most powerful gift you could ever give any deceased person. If I were to die, I would actually want people to ask Allah to forgive me and to grant me Jannah. That would be the biggest thing you could ever do. And continue to make the dua and make it again and again and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if the person has had a debt, it would help if you were to contribute towards you know, finishing up the debt. If the person was supposed to fulfill for some reason they couldn't, it would benefit if you perhaps would fulfill that particular Hajj by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So like I said, uh, s some people engage in so many things, they believe that after three days you need to gather, and after 10 days perhaps you need to gather, and after perhaps 40 days you need to gather. We don't find that in the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so we'd prefer to do that which is authentic and which is more beneficial. Even if shaitan comes to us and makes us feel for a moment that you know what? Um, uh, what you've done is very little, it's very light. Why don't you, you know, you do something much more, but to be honest, it's light and it's easy, but that's the most beneficial thing. It doesn't mean that because gold is right here and it's easy for me to get, that I must go and dig the stones from out there. The gold is right here, let me collect it. Mashallah, that's Allah. So Allah's made it easy for us. Also, what I'd want to encourage uh, and spend a moment to encourage us all, don't wait for you for your for yourself to die and then hope that someone after you is going to do something you know some people sometimes uh, they build a waqf and they say okay this is a masjid uh, inshallah the name of my my parents may allah grant them jannah and so on do things in your life in your life read your quran fulfill your hajj you know make sure your debts are all paid up and make sure whatever's happened you know your good your charities knowledge you disseminate in a beautiful way and inshallah that will help much more than if someone else uh, were to come later on and do something claiming that okay this is on your behalf may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may he guide us in this regard uh, jazakumullah khair shukran for that question my sister and i hope the answer has helped your profession inshallah my name is Hussain. I am a market manager in the Jablan Packaging Company. People in the grave. No, it's okay. People in the grave. Can they listen to what's going on in the world? Because it's said that three things go to the people in the grave the good deeds, the wealth, and the people. And after they can hear the footsteps in the grave, then the punishment starts. And also Rasulullah can he also, does he know what's going on in the grave, uh, what's going on in the world till the Qiyamah? Yeah. 
Jazakallah khair, my brother. That's a very, very important question. Uh, and each one of be asking the question. But before we answer it, we need to know, if I have a question of this nature, where should I look for the answer? It's a very important question. And is anyone and everyone qualified to just give me an opinion and say, oh yeah, you know what, they, uh, that's it, you, they can hear you, so you can go there and sit and have a chat with your, your uncle and say, uncle, you know what, auntie's troubling me a lot and so on. Really, people think that, you know, the, the, the dead, Perhaps they can hear everything and so on. The truth is, the only answers that are accurate are the answers given to us by Allah and Rasulullah So as you correctly mentioned the hadith of the dead hearing the footsteps of those who have come to bury and so on, the truth is, we know that when a person dies, the functions, the worldly functions of these organs is complete and over. Now it's connected to Allah, a different form and a different way. Allah allows them to hear certain things and does not allow them to hear certain things. So like the footstep, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said clearly that, okay, the, the footsteps are heard, we believe the footsteps are heard. If there are any other sounds, whether they are heard or not, Allah knows best. According to us, the footsteps are heard because the hadith says that and we stop there. Similarly, when we say, Assalamu alaikum ahla diyari min al mu'minina wal muslimin wa inna insha'Allah bikum la lahiqun, the narration says they hear that. How they hear it, I don't know. Allah says they hear it because sometimes people like, you know, uh, people might have exhumed graves in order to try and move them which is something that is not supposed to be done unless under certain circumstances for certain reasons uh, it has been done because of politics and various other things and they say look there's hardly anything there how can this person hear you i say look if the hadith says that we believe it and we stop at it that's it so now someone says well if they can hear the salam why can't they hear everything else why can't i go and talk to them the reason is have you owned a radio so you'll understand the radio has so many stations you can tune to, so many stations you can tune to, but you tune to one. When you're tuned to one, you can only hear what's on that one. No matter what's happening on all the other ones, you cannot hear them. So whatever's according to a certain tune on a certain frequency, you can hear it. That is explained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith. So if I go and I say, Assalamu alaykum ahla diyari min al mu'minina wal muslimin, it's on a certain frequency. But the minute I start going and I start speaking about, hey, you know, your son is troubling me, people do this. That's ignorance. And people start asking questions to say, you know, I need help and you know this, I, I really need you to assist me, guide me, and so on. That, all that is un disallowed. So one might say, well, how is it disallowed? Say, look, it's the wrong frequency altogether. That's my way of explaining it. So it's there in the hadith, as you said, the khashkhasha and you know, the, the ni'al, the, 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 the uh, slippers or the uh, sandals and whatever, you, you know, is heard, the footsteps, so to speak. And at the same time, uh, the salam. And as for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the hadith makes it quite clear that Anyone who has greeted me, Allah returns the ruh to and I respond to the salam. How exactly that's done, I don't know. It's not explained to us. I believe exactly that and I stop at that. Another thing is when it comes to the body of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it hasn't been uh, touched at all by any form, by the earth or by mites. Like the hadith says in Allah, harrama ala al ardi an ta'kula ajsad al anbiya. Allah has prohibited for the earth to eat at the bodies of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as fresh as ever. And he responds to the salam. But does that give me the right to start talking about so many other things and complaining? We would stop exactly where that hadith stopped to say, you know what? You go, you do read the salam, you follow the way the sahaba radiallahu anhum did it. And that's what happens. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.